Hi everyone, I'm Nima Romani, former federal prosecutor, president of West Coast Trial Lawyers, and I'm here to talk about our nation's gun laws. Obviously, everyone is talking about Robert Card, who's responsible for one of the worst mass shootings in American history. And there's clearly mental health issues going on there, and I want to talk about how that intersects with our nation's gun laws. Now, whether it was an AR-15 or some other type of rifle, there's no law in Maine or under federal law that would have prohibited him from having such a weapon. And this is why. There's no federal assault weapons ban, nor is there such a ban in Maine that would have prevented him from owning a gun. Now, some states like California, where I live, do have assault weapons ban, but those have been under attack, which I'll talk about in a minute. But everyone's talking about CARD's mental health issues, and there are federal laws that prohibit certain people from having guns. Examples are felons, or drug addicts, or people who are unlawfully in the country. They call them aliens. But also people who are mentally unwell. But the issue is, there has to be an adjudication that the person is unfit to have a weapon, or they have to be committed to a mental institution or a psychiatric facility. Now, even though Card had some documented mental health issues, he was allegedly hearing voices, he made threats, he even spent some time at a facility, but because there was no adjudication or commitment, he actually lawfully bought the gun. Now, the question is, should there be changes to our nation's gun laws? And there's a lot of folks on both sides that have very strong feelings about this. Suffice it to say that the gun lobby is very strong in the United States, and there's many people who are gun owners, the vast majority of them lawful gun owners, who really care about this issue. They're single issue voters. So there's a very little chance of any new gun legislation passing the Republican controlled house. And I don't think Democrats even want to touch this issue. It's so divisive, especially during an election year. So I can't see something happening in terms of bipartisan legislation, much less legislation that's initiated in the Senate right now. So unfortunately, this will continue to be a problem. I, I compare it in some ways to Israel, Palestine. People ask me about it and I say, I don't know what the answer is. And same thing with gun laws. Now turning to more liberal states like California that have tried to enact gun control legislation, banning assault weapons, for instance. Judges, particularly conservative judges, have routinely struck down these laws as unconstitutional, as violating the Second Amendment. So not only are we dealing with a powerful gun lobby and folks that feel very strongly about this issue, there's a lot of judges in the United States and particularly federal judges that were appointed by Republican presidents all the way through the appellate courts and even the U.S. Supreme Court that have a very broad view of the Second Amendment. So even if state legislatures pass law, or even if Congress does and it's signed by the president, it's unlikely to survive Second Amendment scrutiny. So unfortunately, I think these mass shootings will continue to be not uncommon unless we change our gun laws and do a lot better when it comes to mental health. Thanks for watching everyone. Make sure to like, follow, and ring the bell for notifications.